Hi there. Today I wanted to take a minute to talk about a particularly important molecule for cell structure and function, and that is the phospholipid. And then once we look at the phospholipid, let's spend a minute talking about how those phospholipids contribute to the structure of cell membranes. So let's go ahead and get started. So the phospholipid is a molecule, uh, and here we're showing a complex structure of the phospholipid. And this is probably more detail than we really need, so we'll simplify later on. But I wanted to point out uh, the structure so that we would understand what was going on. So phospholipid is a lipid, right? Uh, we learned about fats and lipids in the past. And so we can see that it has this lipid structure where at the bottom there are these fatty acid tails here and here. One is bent, and one is straight. This fatty acid tail is what we would call saturated. It means it contains no double bonds. Whereas the other uh, fatty acid that has this bend, we would call unsaturated, meaning that it has a double bond in it. So at the bottom of this phospholipid molecule, there are these two fatty acid tails. They are connected to this middle part of the molecule right here. This is a glycerol molecule. And so we connect our fatty acids to this glycerol molecule. Now, if you remember the general structure of lipids, you might recall a structure called a triglyceride. If this glycerol molecule had one more fatty acid hanging off of it, we would have a triglyceride molecule. And that's the most common kind of fat that we find in cells uh, that is used to store energy. But this one only has two fatty acid chains. And instead of having a third fatty acid attached to this carbon of glycerol, we have this phosphate group attached instead. So that's how we get the name a phospholipid. It has the fatty acid tails, that's what makes it a lipid, and then it has this phosphate group, which makes it a phospholipid. So again, three parts, there's the phosphate up here, the glycerol in the middle, and then these fatty acid tails at the bottom. And so again, this structure probably shows too much detail, more than we actually need for our discussion. So we're gonna simplify this drawing. And so the kind of phospholipid I'm, I'm going to show from here on out is something like this, where we're gonna have a ball structure to represent the phosphate at the top. And then we're gonna have a couple squiggly lines or lines representing those fatty acid tails. So this is the kind of structure you'll see moving forward. A ball for the phosphate head, and then the two fatty acid tails hanging off the bottom. So let's think about the properties of the phospholipid that make it uh, behave the way it does. So the phosphate grip group is at on top, and again, the fatty acid tails are on the bottom. Let's think about that phosphate group more. So the phosphate group has a characteristic of having a negative charge. So that phosphate is always negatively charged, it's ionized. And anything with a charge we call polar. So phosphate groups, they're negatively charged, that makes them polar. Polar things, we also know, like to interact with water because water has charges that will interact with other polar things. So we can call anything that is charged or polar, we can call it hydrophilic. It likes to interact with water. So this top part of the phospholipid molecule is hydrophilic, it likes to interact with water. How about the bottom? Again, at the bottom we've got the fatty acid tails. Those don't have any charge. They're made primarily of just carbon and hydrogen. They're all non-charged, non-polar molecules. So we can call them hydrophobic. When molecules do not have a charge, they don't like to interact with water, so we call them hydrophobic. So a phospholipid molecule has a hydrophilic phosphate head group and hydrophobic fatty acid tails. And any molecule that has both hydrophobic and hydrophilic parts, we call amphipathic. So this word amphipathic just means that this molecule has a hydrophilic part and a hydrophobic part. And it's this amphipathic nature of these phospholipids that are going to provide phospholipids with the behavior uh, that makes them so useful in cells. So let's see what the behavior is. Okay, so if we take a whole bunch of phospholipids and we add them to some water, they're gonna form some specific structures. And those structures are interesting. 
So the first structure that can form if you add phospholipids to water is something called a micelle. And so here's a micelle. A micelle is basically just a little ball that the phospholipids form into, again, when they're exposed to water. And why do they form a ball in this way? We don't have to do anything to make them form this ball. They just do it all by themselves. So why? Well, it's because they want to get all their hydrophobic tails away from the water. So a whole bunch of phospholipids all bring their hydrophobic tails together. They like to interact with one another, but they don't like to interact with water. So those get hidden on the interior of this micelle structure. That ends up exposing all of the hydrophilic heads to the outside of the structure. So we've got all these balls, they're pointing outwards, interacting with water molecules, and then again on the inside of the structure, all the hydrophobic tails are hidden away from the water. And we could describe this as sort of making all these phospholipids happy in the way that they're interacting with water. So micelles aren't very common structures in terms of biology, but it's good to know why phospholipids form that structure if they're exposed to water. But there's a more common in biology structure that we're going to form, and that's this one. It's called a phospholipid bilayer. So here you can see, again, this is going to happen if we add a whole bunch of phospholipids to water. They're going to orient themselves so that their tails aren't exposed to the water and that their uh, hydrophilic head groups are exposed to the water. And in this structure, we make a sheet of these phospholipids. And again, in the inside of that sheet, we have all the hydrophilic, sorry, all the hydrophobic tails together. And then on either side, exposed to where there's water, we have the hydrophilic phosphate head groups. So the head groups can interact with water, and the tails don't have to interact with water. So if we take one of these sheets and we fold it around, we can turn it into a ball. And here's what one of those balls would look like. So again, this is just a phospholipid bilayer that's been bent around and formed into a ball. And this is what happens to make a cell. So here in the middle, we'd have, we could have the cytoplasm of a cell. Everything on the inside of the cell would be in the middle. Uh, it's exposed, the cytoplasm, which is liquid, is exposed to the hydrophilic head groups of the phospholipids. Then there are all the fatty acid tails together surrounding the cell, but not having to interact with the water that is either inside the cell or outside the cell. And then on the very outside of the cell, again, we've got the hydrophilic phosphate head groups. So this is the structure that we're going to be considering a lot moving forward throughout our course. Now, cells are not this simple. The phospholipid bilayer is much more complex than that. And I just want to show you what that looks like quickly before we end. So again, the phospholipid bilayer, that makes up cell membranes. It has these two sheets of phospholipids oriented in opposite directions so that the phosphate head groups are exposed to water on one side of the membrane and on the other side of the membrane there's another sheet of phosphate head groups exposed to water there. And then all the fatty acid tails are in the middle of that membrane. But again the cell membranes don't have just phospholipids. They have other molecules as well. And here those molecules are shown in the drawing. And there's all these proteins there's some cholesterol, there's some things called glycolipids, but all these molecules are added to the membrane to give it additional functionality, to make it work right for cells. And we'll be talking a lot more about how those proteins function in the cell membrane later on. But that's where we'll stop in terms of discussing uh, the basic structure of a phospholipid and how those phospholipids form cell membranes. I hope you find it useful. As always, please let me know if you have any questions by uh, letting me know on the discussion board, and I'll talk to you soon.